Good morning, Magic. It's Monday, April 13th, 2020, and all this week I want to talk to you about how Akoria came to be. See, it all started with the second set of Throne of Eldraine. Now, I know what you're thinking. There isn't a second set of Throne of Eldraine, and you're right. What happened was we were making two, and the first was much like what you saw today, and then the second one was going to be Will and Rowan going into the dark, mysterious forest and exploring it. And pretty early on, we decided we didn't need to do that, so we cut that out, we moved Theros up a set, but that left room for another set. And fortunately, we had enough time to iterate and come up with ideas. So a bunch of the best minds in Magic put their heads together, and Rosewater had something he was really championing, which was Monster World. Monster World, or Monster Island as some of us called it, would be a place where creatures inspired by everything from famous movies to popular video games would show up and battle. But what kind of mechanics would this need? We started investigating to find out. One of the first major elements to get added into Aquaria that shows up pretty much as you see it today is keyword counters. Now these started from what we call a hackathon inside Magic Design. This is where we take a week and we make little tiny mini teams and everyone on one of those teams is working on a very specific project. It's not for a certain set, it's kind of like a, hey, you have time to work on something new, what do you want to come up with? Some past hackathon projects include Modern Horizons, Commander Legends, and Jumpstart. So it's got a pretty sweet pedigree. But this hackathon was a little different. Instead of focusing on products, we were focused on mechanics. So every team was trying to make mechanics that Magic could use in its future. And I was on one being run by Mark Rosewater, all about punch-out counters. Where we had these punch-out counters in Omiket for bricks or minus one minus one counters or exert, and it showed that you could put something in packs that people could use to actually track things on the board. So we started thinking, what could we put on these? And one idea that came up pretty fast was keywords. What if there were keywords that we could give to creatures? And this would allow for you to actually permanently grant creatures an ability, which is something that we don't normally do unless you count, I don't know, riding the Dilu horse or something like that. It's a tenet of magic design, but since we had an easy way to get you permanent physical counters, we thought, hey, well, let's give this thing a try. And we started playing it, and it was a blast. It worked really, really, really well. Another big mechanic that we added in relatively early on was mutate. The idea of mutate was something that was latched onto right away. It'd be really cool to have a small monster that could get bigger and more abilities as the game went on. But how are we going to do that? Well, the final version of Mutate you see here went through a lot of changes and a lot of iteration. And it all started by looking around for some pieces of inspiration. One of those is a game we make called Duel Masters. Now this is a Japanese only game, but it has this ability called Evolve, where you have a creature in play and you put another creature actually on top of it and it becomes a whole new creature and giving you abilities and bigger power and all that kind of stuff. Sound familiar? The second we looked at was Champion. Champion is from Lorwyn Block. It was trying to be a version of this, but it never really quite worked. The flavor wasn't really there, and it was very mechanical. You play a creature, and it exiled another creature, and that creature came back. It didn't really quite congeal. And so this time around, we asked, could we actually go with it the other way? Could we do it almost Duel Master style, where you put it on top of the creature? And we started looking at how to do that, and it turned out it worked. In between the team, and especially, I think, Mark Rosewater and Andrew Veen, Andrew being on the Duel Masters team and having a lot of experience there as well, they brought this thing to life. But how Mutate ended up is a lot different than where Mutate began. And a big piece of the early part of Mutate was that you could only mutate on a creature if it shared a creature type, or a keyword, which admittedly is a flavor win. It makes sense that, okay, a cat could only evolve out of a cat, but it made it very limiting to play with. It was hard to build decks around, and you could only kind of play it in a very certain kind of deck. But this, by the way, is why you see kind of five main creature types showing up over and over and over again in Aquaria. It's sort of a fun Easter egg of how the set was originally designed. You've got cats in white, elementals in blue, nightmares in black, dinosaurs in red, and beasts in green. And actually, if you look at the Apex Monster for each three color combination, you'll see it lines up perfectly. For example, Brockos is black, green, blue, and is a Nightmare Beast Elemental. As you can tell, Mutate went through a lot of changes, but I'll let Dave Humphreys talk about that in a future episode. What I want to talk about next is cycling. What is cycling doing here? Well, it just made sense. If you were going to play a bunch of big creatures in your deck, one of the big problems is then you end up with these hands that are all big creatures that you can't cast. Voila. Cycling. You get to discard your large card, and it helps you find the card that you need. It's even better in a three-color set, too, because if you're playing three colors and you have this kind of light wedge theme at rare, mythic rare, some uncommons, it means that you can cycle your extra cards away to help find the colors that you need. And that's why, by the way, you see so many uh, colorless mana cycling costs here, even all the way down to just one colorless mana to cycle. For example, Boon of the Wishgiver is kind of a strange card to have cycling one on, until you realize that making sure that you can cycle it early to hit your land drops to cast your big monsters, or hit your third color, is really important. And that's just the tip of the monster-sized iceberg that is Aquaria Design Stories. And I know you probably have a lot of other questions. How did Companion come to be? 
What's the deal with Lutri? How did these triomes get made? Is this set overly complex? All these questions and more, I'll tackle in my videos later this week. I'm bringing in a few other experts. I'm bringing in people like Dave Humphreys, who is the lead set designer on this set, Sheldon Mannery, who is kind of the founding father of the Commander format and on the Commander Rules Committee, and a couple other goodies as well. And I'll be here on Friday taking all the questions that they, they didn't tackle and answering them in a Q&A as well. So I asked on Twitter for what you wanted to know, and I've already started to work on that, but if you have anything you wanna hear about, please tweet at me or reply in this video, and I'll take some of the top comments and top questions and answer them in my video on Friday. So stay tuned for that, have fun, and I'll talk with you then. In the meantime, enjoy Aquaria. You got this.